Okay, now we come to Ashoka. Hmm. According to the Sri Lankan records, uh, the uh, Buddha died uh, in the eighth year of the reign of King Ajatasattu of Magadala. Uh, and then the King Ajatasattu's uh, uh, dynasty uh, continued for several generations uh, until the last king was called King Nagadasakala. Uh, that means uh, when the uh, Magadha, this uh, dynasty uh, was still strong. Uh, uh, so later uh, the Susunaga dynasty started, uh, but lasted a very short time. Uh, and then after that, the Nanda dynasty started uh, and endured for 22 years. Uh. And then in the year 327 BCE, uh, Alexander the Great conquered Northwest India. Uh, after he conquered into India, uh, there was a, a lot of disorder. Uh, following the resulting disorder, uh, Chandra Gupta uh, became king uh, and founded the Mauryan dynasty. Uh, he established a strong kingdom uh, over much of India and ruled for 24 years. Uh, then, um, after Chandra Gupta, uh, his son uh, was King Bindusara. And this King Bindusara ruled for 28 years. Uh, and Bindusara's son uh, was Asoka. Uh, Asoka became king uh, in the year 268 BCE. Uh, this one, uh, uh, almost all scholars uh, accept this date. Uh, why? Because during the time of Emperor Asoka, he sent missionaries uh, to spread the Dhamma. And he spent, sent missionaries to spread the Dhamma in different countries. Uh, and this was recorded uh, in the Asoka pillars. Uh, uh, he, the Emperor Asoka, he constructed uh, stone pillars uh, where the Dhamma was carved out. Uh, and also some of the things that happened at that time. Uh, so it is mentioned uh, that he sent missionaries to such and such countries. Uh, and the kings of the countries were mentioned. So from there, historians, uh, they, they look and they see uh, such and such a king, such and such a king, lived at what time, what time, uh, what year, what year, and then they came to the conclusion uh, that the King Asoka became king in the year 268. Uh. So Sri Lankan records uh, say uh, that 218 years passed uh, between the time the Buddha died and the time uh, Asoka became king. Uh, uh, but Chinese books uh, say differently. Uh, uh, so, but strangely enough, uh, there is one book uh, in the Chinese uh, records, uh, chronicles, uh, it's called the Ai Wang Chuan, uh, the King Asoka records or King Asoka biography. Uh, and there it is stated uh, that from the Buddha's time uh, until Emperor Asoka's time, uh, there were 12 kings of Magadha. Uh, uh, even though the dynasty had stopped, uh, they still had uh, this king. Uh, so 12 kings uh, lived uh, from the Buddha's time until the Emperor Asoka's time. Uh. Now, just now we mentioned uh, that certain kings, uh, uh, they, they ruled for 24 years, 28 years, and Asoka himself, uh, was king for 36 years. You know, once a person becomes a king, he does not uh, retire, he does not take pension until he dies. Usually that's the case. So that's why most kings, they will rule for 20 something years or 30 something years until they die. That being the case, if 12 kings passed from the time of the Buddha until Asoka, so, uh, 200 over years uh, is a reasonable uh, record, uh, but a uh, reasonable period. Uh, but the Chinese books say uh, only uh, 12, uh, 100 years passed uh, between uh, the time of Emperor Asoka and the Buddha's passing away. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, they don't acknowledge uh, that the Buddha passed away around the year 485 BCE. Uh, they think uh, uh, it was actually uh, 100 years later, uh, that means around 385 BCE. Uh, mm. 
Now, and one of the reasons they give uh, is that they say um, when the Buddha passed away, he transmitted his teachings to Mahakasapa. Uh, he transmitted his teachings to Mahakasapa. And then Mahakasapa trans- transmitted his teachings to Ananda. Uh, and then who transmitted it to Sanakavasi, to Upabhukta, to Ditikala. So in other words, there were five generations of monks uh, from the time of uh, the Buddha's passing away until Asoka. Uh. But then uh, you must know uh, that this uh, is not in the in the suttas. Uh. Uh, this is only what they say. Uh. Uh, for example, when they, they say uh, that the Buddha transmitted uh, this leadership of the Sangha to Mahakasapa, we find the suttas, uh, this is not correct. Uh. Uh, because when the Buddha was about to pass away, the Rebbe Ananda asked the Buddha, la, said, Bhagawa, after you are gone, la, whom should we follow as our teacher? And the Buddha said, la, after I am gone, la, pick the Dhamma and the Vinaya la, that I have taught la, as your teacher. La. Uh, so the Buddha did not say uh, that to follow another monk as his teacher. The Buddha said to follow his teachings as the real teacher. Uh, whereas the Mahayana books, uh, they uh, say differently. Uh. Now, the Mahayana books also say uh, that uh, the at the time of uh, Emperor Asoka, uh, there were only two sects of Buddhism. La. It's only after the time of Emperor Asoka la, that the 18 other schools formed. La. Uh, but in the Sri Lankan records, uh, the 18 school, additional schools already formed uh, by the time of King Asoka. Also, it is mentioned in the Sri Lankan uh, records uh, that uh, because of the many wrong views uh, that the King Asoka saw uh, among the monks, uh, that he asked a very respected monk called Bogali Putta Tissa Thera to convene the third council, uh, convene the third council of monks uh, and then to recite uh, the true Dhamma uh, and then to tell them what is wrong, what is right. Uh. And also those monks uh, who did not follow the true Dhamma, who had wrong views, uh, uh, this Bogali Putta Tissa Thera uh, was asked to defrock the monks, uh, disrobe the monks. Uh, so, now if you think uh, that uh, if all this happened uh, 100 years after Emperor Asoka's time, uh, if Mughali Putta Tissa Thera tried to disrobe the monks, uh, I don't think they would have allowed him to disrobe. They would probably have fought with him. Uh, right? Uh, it's only, uh, to my mind, uh, he could only do that uh, because King Asoka uh, directed him to do it. Uh. King Asoka was behind him. Uh. Because of the king's power, uh, uh, the monks could be disrobed. Uh, but if King Asoka was not around, uh, and this happened 100 years later, uh, if any monk tried to disrobe another monk, uh, they would then definitely not listen to him, right? Uh, so also, uh, uh, it is stated in the Sri Lankan records uh, that the second Sangha council, uh, where the uh, basic schism um, uh, happened uh, in Vesali uh, where the monks of Vesali uh, was not practicing well and the 700 monks convened the second Sangha council uh, uh, it is mentioned in the Sri Lankan records uh, that this happened at, at the time of King Kala Asoka uh, in other words, at that time, 100 years after the Buddha's passing away, eh, there was a king called Kala Asoka. La. And then the third council, la, which was held during the time of Emperor Asoka, was another 118 years later. later la. Uh, so, you see from here eh, that the Chinese records uh, they have no knowledge uh, that two Asoka uh, kings uh, existed. Uh. They did not know of the existence of Kala Asoka. They only know of one Asoka only. Uh, this famous Asoka uh, sometimes is called this King Asoka or sometimes it is called Dhamma Asoka uh, because he ruled according to Dhamma. So sometimes they call him Dhamma Asoka. Uh. 
So because they did not have this knowledge uh, that there was another Asoka, uh, most probably uh, they confused these two Asokas uh, and thought that uh, they were the same person. Uh, that's why uh, you find uh, that they say uh, that this, uh, 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 all this happened uh, uh, 100 years after the Buddha's passing away. Uh, so from here uh, uh, we can see uh, most probably why uh, the Chinese records have it wrong. Uh, uh, now I'd like to talk a bit about King Asoka. Uh, it is stated uh, that the Buddhism of King Asoka uh, is closer to early Buddhism uh, than to sectarian Buddhism uh, or Hinayana Buddhism. Uh, uh, it's also stated uh, that Asoka converted to Buddhism uh, in the seventh year of his reign, uh, seven years after he became king. Uh, he became a Buddhist. La. But in the eighth year of his reign, la, he conquered a country called Kalinga. La. And when he conquered this country, la, the people fought very fiercely. La. So a lot of people died. La. And in this war, la, he saw a lot of suffering. La. Uh, families were separated. La. Members of the family were separated. Sometimes a family lost a mother. Sometimes a family lost a father. And they had great difficulty to continue uh, living uh, to, 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 to find a livelihood. Uh. So because he saw also so many people uh, killed and disfigured, maimed and all that, uh, so he regretted uh, that he started this war. Uh. Uh, from that time onwards, uh, he did not want to conduct any more wars. Uh. Uh, then he started to practice the Buddha's teaching seriously. Uh. Uh, he believed uh, that compassion was very important. Uh, so he kept the eight precepts. He went to the monasteries to, to do his retreats and all these things. Uh. And then he stated uh, from the 12th year until the 27th year uh, that he became king, uh, he made great effort uh, to spread the Buddha's teachings. Uh. And how did he make effort to spread the Buddha's teachings? One uh, was by erecting uh, these uh, stone pillars. Uh. Uh, what they are called Asokan edicts. Uh. Uh, these stone pillars, uh, he asked the people to carve uh, the words of the Buddha uh, on these stone pillars. Uh. And also uh, a lot of other things uh, that he thought was important, uh, uh, his ideas about compassion and all these things. Uh. And also uh, he sent monks, uh, missionaries uh, to other countries uh, to spread the Dhamma uh, to nearby countries uh, like now what we know as Pakistan, Afghanistan and all that uh, uh, at that time uh, were Buddhist countries. Uh, uh. And then uh, he liked to make this uh, Dhamma Yatras. Uh. Dhamma Yatras means Dhamma Tours. Uh. In this Dhamma Tours uh, he'll go to various parts of India uh, uh, and when he go, when he went to various places, uh, he will visit monks, uh, especially well-known or good practicing monks. Uh, he go and see uh, monks, and then also he will uh, do dana, uh, either uh, offer food and robes and all that to the monks, uh, or uh, do dana to poor people, uh, uh, help the poor people. Uh. Also, he would teach Dhamma uh, to the to the masses, uh, to the ordinary people, uh, uh, taught them uh, to practice the Dhamma correctly, uh, etc. Uh. Now, since we know uh, that uh, during the Empress Asoka's time, uh, we still have the original Buddhism, uh, uh, we look at the stone pillars uh, that he constructed, uh, then we get a good idea uh, what is original Buddhism. Uh. In the stone pillars uh, that he constructed, uh, it is mentioned uh, that there are five Nikayas. Uh, the Buddha's teachings, uh, at that time already, uh, there were five Nikayas. One is the Diga Nikaya, another is the Majima Nikaya, Sangyutta Nikaya, Anguttara Nikaya. The last was the Kudaka Nikaya. Kudaka Nikaya means the collection, the minor collection. Uh, that means uh, those few suttas uh, that could not fit uh, into the Diga, Majima, or Sangyutta, or Anguttara Nikaya, they were put into the Udaka Nikaya. Uh, yeah. So, so you, you, you note, uh, note carefully, uh, this is original Buddhism, uh, the five 
Nikaya. But then uh, in the last Kudaka Nikaya uh, later, uh, monks uh, started to add more and more books uh, to the uh, Kudaka Nikaya. So from a minor collection, uh, now he has become a major collection. Uh, a lot of books, uh, much more than the other Nikayas. Uh, so the the first four Nikayas, Diga, Majima, Sangyuta and Angutra Nikaya, uh, uh, can be reliably said to be the original words of the Buddha. Uh. Now, the Asoka, he taught the people uh, to practice the Dhamma well, uh, especially compassion and, and sincerity. Uh. And needless killing uh, was prohibited. Uh. He even uh, made laws uh, that uh, if animals were to be killed, uh, pregnant animals should not be killed. Uh. Uh, and also nursing animals, those uh, that had just given birth, uh, uh, those uh, female animals uh, which need to give milk to the uh, to the young, uh, uh, they were not allowed to be killed. Uh. Uh, and then hospitals were built for people, uh, and hospitals were also built for animals. Uh. Uh, the, the, the Emperor Asuka, uh, he practiced great compassion, uh. he cared for animals, uh, built hospitals for them also. Uh. And then he asked the people uh, to plant uh, trees uh, by the roadside so that when people travel on the roads, uh, it was not so hot. Uh. And he also encouraged uh, the planting of medicinal plants uh, so that people could benefit uh, from the medicinal plants uh, uh, like neem trees and all that. Uh. And then uh, he also uh, had wells dug, uh, wells, uh, dug uh, to provide water for people. Uh, he also built resting places, like, like nowadays we have the R&R and &R the highway. Uh, he also had these uh, resting places for travelers, uh, so that they could obtain drinking water there and have a rest. Uh. And he taught uh, people uh, to be obedient to parents uh, and to respect elders uh, uh, and to uh, have uh, just treatment uh, of all peoples, uh, no matter their caste, no matter their, uh, their level, uh, uh, including slaves and all that. Uh, he said uh, that uh, we should treat them justly. Uh, uh, and also he gave up hunting. Uh, you know, kings uh, like to go hunting. But he uh, gave up hunting. Uh, instead, uh, he spent his time uh, uh, doing this uh, Dharma tours, uh, uh, which he enjoyed a lot. Uh, uh, then he put a lot of effort uh, in governing uh, well. Uh, he wanted to make sure uh, that he benefited the people, uh, like a bodhisattva, uh, benefit the people uh, and in, in as many ways as he could. Uh, uh. And then he also appointed uh, ministers of Dhamma uh, to look after the Sangha affairs, to look after the Sasana. Uh. And on top of that, uh, he also appointed ministers uh, who were responsible for other religions, uh, also to take care of other religions. Uh. And then he warned against further schisms of the Sangha. Uh. He warned the monks uh, not to create more schools uh, and that he would defrock uh, monks uh, who attempted to, uh, to, to create a schism uh, or who had wrong views. Uh. Okay. Now we come to. Now we talk about sectarian or Hinayana Buddhism. Now this uh, this uh, sectarian or Hinayana Buddhism, uh, uh, most of its important doctrines uh, occurred from the year 150 BCE uh, until the year 150 CE. Uh, uh, and but but then uh, he became popular uh, uh, later uh, from the 50 BCE uh, uh, only uh, he became popular uh, uh. and uh, this uh, sectarian or Hinayana Buddhism uh, is uh, typified uh, by the development of the scholastic Abhidhamma uh, because at that time uh, the, the Sangha was very well supported. So the monks, uh, they had a lot of time uh, and then uh, many of them uh, did a lot of studies uh, on the Dhamma and then they started to uh, 
uh, have new ideas about the Dhamma. This they call the Abhidhamma. The Abhidhamma, according to this book by Professor Hirakawa, is not the higher Dhamma. Uh, Abhidhamma means analysis of the Dhamma. That means uh, uh, they analyze the Dhamma and then they come up uh, with new concepts. Uh, new concepts about the Dhamma that the Buddha did not teach. Uh. So, uh, even though they, they, they knew uh, that the Buddha's words uh, were to be found uh, in the suttas and the Vinaya, yet uh, uh, they preferred uh, to, uh, to have this Abhidhamma and all that. Uh, uh. So, uh, also, uh, this uh, sectarian Buddhism, uh, Hinayana Buddhism, uh, uh, was more for the monks uh, and nuns. Uh, and um, originally the word Savaka means disciples of the Buddha and includes uh, monastics as well as lay people. Uh. But in sectarian Buddhism, uh, disciples, Savakas, uh, only meant the monks and the nuns. Uh. So this uh, sectarian Buddhism, uh, because they started to have ideas about this Abhidhamma, all these uh, 18 schools uh, of sectarian Buddhism, uh, they had their own Abhidhamma. Uh. Every school, the Abhidhamma differed uh, from school to school uh, because all were new ideas. Uh. For example, uh, in the uh, our Theravada Abhidhamma, you find new concepts uh, like Javana, Bhavanga, uh, Patisandhi, Chitta, uh, Chuti Chitta, uh, Kalapas, and all this uh, that the Buddha did not teach. Uh, so, uh, this uh, Theravada Abhidhamma, there are seven books. Uh, you see, all of these 18 schools, uh, most of the of uh, doctrines uh, were lost. Uh, finally, now uh, we have uh, mostly uh, only the Theravada and they also have the Savastivadin. Uh, so, out of the seven books, uh, the last three uh, were the Dattu, Kata, Yamaka and Patana. Uh, and because these last three books uh, were written later, uh, so they uh, were compiled later, uh, they have uh, a lot of uh, new concepts. Uh, uh. And then the later, uh, this uh, sectarian Buddhism, uh, they, they start to to have other teachings. Uh. For example, the Pitaka Padesa, Pitako Padesa, uh, the Neti Pakarana. Uh, and later, uh, in the 5th century, uh, uh, that means 400 something, uh, they started to write commentaries, uh, uh, interpretations. Uh, of the suttas, lah, their own ideas about the sutta, lah, uh, and this is called the atakata. Lah, uh. So, the most famous uh, of the commentators uh, is a man called Buddha Gosa. Lah. This Buddha Gosa, he wrote commentaries, uh, he was a great scholar. Lah, uh. You see, the trouble with these scholarly monks, uh, they don't practice enough. Lah. Instead of meditating, uh, like the Buddha advised, uh, to clear the mind, uh, and attain the jhana so that they can see clearly. Uh. These scholar monks, uh, they keep studying and then uh, uh, having ideas, uh, uh, but their minds are not developed. Uh. So if their minds have not attained jhana, uh, the Buddha said, uh, they cannot see things as they really are. Uh. So they write commentaries, uh, and uh, this Buddha Gosa, he wrote commentaries on all the Nikayas uh, and the Vinaya books. Uh. And he wrote commentaries on the Dhammapada, Sutta Nipata, and also another book called the Visuddhi Maga. Uh, all these are later writings. Uh, so, when all these later writings started to appear, uh, uh, people uh, became more interested uh, in these later books, uh, like the Abhidhamma and the commentaries. Uh, instead, instead of putting all the attention on the suttas and the Vinaya, uh, now the attention, uh, they are more interested in the Abhidhamma, not in the suttas. More interested in the commentaries uh, than actually what the Buddha said and all these things. Uh, uh. So that's the difference uh, between original Buddhism and sectarian Buddhism. Uh. In other words, uh, sectarian Buddhism created a lot of new books uh, which did not exist before and they preferred uh, to study these books uh, rather than the original words of the Buddha. 
this the Buddha already won in the suttas. The Buddha won uh, in the Sangyutta Nikaya, I think 20.7. Uh, the Buddha said in the future, uh, uh, the monks will not be interested in the original words of the Buddha. Instead, they will be interested in the words of disciples. Uh, uh, and the Buddha said, uh, this will cause the disappearance of the true Dhamma. Uh, when the Buddha says the word of disciples, uh, he means uh, the words of later monks, uh, uh, later monks who write new books. Uh. Now, a lot of people don't know uh, that there is one sutta in the Diga Nikaya. Uh, I think it's uh, Diga Nikaya 29, where the Buddha gave a simile of the razor. Uh. The Buddha said uh, in that sutta that the Buddha's teachings uh, are utterly perfect. Uh, and pure uh, and complete. Uh. So the Buddha said, uh, there is no need to add to his words uh, or subtract from his words. Uh. The Buddha said, uh, if a person adds uh, to the Buddha's words, uh, in other words, uh, says more than what the Buddha says, uh, the Buddha says uh, that person does not understand the Dhamma. And if a person thinks uh, that he can subtract some of the Buddha's words, uh, he also does not understand the Dhamma. Uh, so what the Buddha is saying here uh, is that we should only rely on his original words, not on later books. Mm. So it's because uh, these later monks, uh, they don't understand the Buddha's words. Uh, that's why uh, they think uh, they want to add to his words. Uh, they start a lot of new other books. Uh, all this is considered, uh, uh, this is uh, Hinayana books, uh, the Abhidhamma, the commentaries, the... Jataka stories, uh, the Neti Pakarana, the Pedako Padesa, uh, you know, all these books. Uh, uh. So, uh, that's the difference uh, between original Buddhism and Nikaya Buddhism. Uh, now we come to Mahayana Buddhism. Uh. Mahayana Buddhism, uh, most of the books uh, were compiled uh, from 100 BCE uh, to 100 CE. Uh, uh, that means around zero, uh, 200 years uh, period, uh, around the zero CE, uh, 100 years before and 100 years after. Uh. But then uh, they only became popular uh, about um, 10 CE. Uh, uh, 10 years of the common era. Uh. Now the early Mahayana teachings, uh, they still accept uh, that Arahatship uh, is the ideal uh, of the Buddha's teachings, uh, but they try to appeal to people uh, to consider the Bodhisattva path. Uh. For example, one of the early books called the Mahavastu. Uh, this is what they say, uh, that Arahatship is the ideal, but then uh, they try to persuade people uh, to walk the Bodhisattva path. Uh. However, later, Mahayana books uh, like the uh, Lotus Sutra, uh, they champion the Bodhisattva path uh, and condemn the Arahan path. Uh, uh, so when they do that, uh, the Arapaha, Arahan path uh, is a path of mental training uh, and self-control uh, that the Buddha taught uh, that we have to uh, discipline our mind uh, and train ourselves uh, to have self-control uh, and change our character for the better uh, to uh, discard uh, uh, unwholesome states of mind and to cultivate wholesome states of mind. Uh. But instead, uh, uh, this Bodhisattva path uh, talks about paramis. Uh. This paramis uh, was never mentioned by the Buddha in his original teachings. Uh. Uh, it is uh, a later teaching. Uh where they speculate uh, that the Buddha must have taken a very, very long time uh, to become enlightened. Uh. They said uh, that the Buddha cultivated over a period of four asankhya kapas. Asankhya means countless. So when they say four asankhya kapas, uh, it means countless world cycles, uh, plus 100 maha kapas. Uh. So in other words, what they are saying is, it took the Buddha an eternity of time uh, to become enlightened. Uh. Uh, if you think uh, that the Buddha took an, uh, an eternity to become enlightened, uh, surely we must take more than an eternity to become enlightened, isn't it? Uh, so in other words, uh, they are discouraging you uh, to cultivate yourself, uh, 
to practice the arahan path lah. Uh, so they are telling you uh, just to practicing to practice the paramis lah. But then in the Buddha's uh, teaching uh, there is only one path to enlightenment, the noble eightfold path. There is no other path lah. And we look into a noble eightfold path, uh, nothing is mentioned about parami. Uh, so you can understand from here uh, that uh, these are wrong teachings the, because the Buddha said uh, that his teachings are perfect and we should not add to his teachings or subtract from his teachings. Uh, uh. Now it is said here uh, that the early Mahayanis uh, revived the spirit of the Buddha's teachings by adapting it for a new age. However, these innovative elements uh, brought hidden dangers with them. As time passed on, uh, many Buddhists became more and more interested in the new edition than in the original message of the Buddha. Uh, magical elements played an important role in Mahayana Buddhism from the beginning, probably because they were a response to the religious needs of the common people. Perfection of Wisdom Sutras contained claims that the text could protect those who followed it. Co- according to the Lotus Sutra, faith in the Bodhisattva Avalokiteswara, that means Kuan Yin, eh, would protect a person from all disasters. Efficacy of the mantras was found in many Mahayana scriptures. La. Uh, over the centuries, these magical formulas uh, became came to play an increasingly important role in Mahayana Buddhism until by the 6th century esoteric Buddhism, that means the secret school, had emerged as a distinct movement and began to develop in India. So, uh, so you see here, these Mahayana teachings were a response to what people wanted. That's why in Chinese they call them Hong Pian Huat Mui. Uh, so they, they provide what people want. Uh, people, you know, like to pray for help. Uh, so they provide them with Kuan Yin. They say, uh, you need anything, uh, you just call Kuan Yin, Kuan Yin will help you. Uh, but then in the suttas, the Buddha said uh, that uh, what we want uh, and, and it's hard to get uh, is, uh, cannot be obtained uh, by prayers. Uh, or by vows, uh, or by appealing for it. Uh. The Buddha said, uh, if you can get what you want uh, by prayers, or appeals, or vows, uh, then the Buddha said, why is there so much suffering in the world? The Buddha with his psychic eye uh, can see uh, that ghosts are suffering, uh, can see uh, that animals are suffering, hell beings are suffering. Who is helping them? They are crying out uh, every night, and sometimes even the day. Uh, crying out for help, especially like the hell beings. Like. If there is a compassionate Bodhisattva or Buddha can help, uh, why don't he help them? That's enough. Bring all these beings out of hell. Like. Uh, but the Buddha says uh, nobody can help. Uh, our world uh, is created by our karma and it's also created by our mind. Uh, so the world uh, is like a nightmare. Like. Uh, so unless we develop our mind, uh, we keep having nightmares. Uh, sorry, uh, I have all this written all over the place. Uh.